going to sing a new song this morning. It's called By the Mark I Will Know Him. And I love this song because it, it just helps me to know that when we get to heaven, we're going to know who Jesus is. Amen? Amen. It'd be by the marks in His hands. Thank you, Brother Dwayne. Good job. <laughs> Amen. All right. Always makes me a nervous wreck to sing a song. I wonder how Elvis felt. Okay, Brother Dwayne. Well, thank you, Brother. Thank you very much. Number one's really hot right now, brother. If you turn that down just a little bit, that'd be great. Uh, <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Leave it to Dwayne. <laughs> Amen. All right. If you have your Bibles with you, you can open them up to the book of Philippians this morning, if you would. Philippians chapter number three. We'll be reading a portion of Scripture there. 
while you're turning there, I'll tell you about this woman that got on the bus holding her baby. When she stepped up on the bus, the bus driver looked at that baby and said, Ma'am, I tell you, that's the ugliest baby I believe I've ever seen. Boy, she got so mad, she slammed her money in that fare box and she took down the aisle of that bus and she got her a seat back here toward the back. And when she sat down, the man next to her said, Ma'am, I can sense that there's something very wrong with you today. And she said, Well, that bus driver up there just insulted me. He said, well, I sympathize with you. And you know what? He's a public servant, and he shouldn't say anything to insult the passengers. She said, you're right. I'm going to go up there and give him a piece of my mind. He said, that's a good idea. Let me hold your pet monkey while you go up there. <laughs> oh, man, that's horrible, isn't it? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dan just got it. <laughs> Amen. Philippians chapter number 3 and verse number 10. I just want to read um, just a portion of that particular passage. And lots of times we'll label it like uh, the A part and, or the B or the C part of the passage. And so it's Philippians chapter 3, verse number 10 in the first part. Paul writes, he says, "...that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection." Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace, your love for us, God. I cannot uh, fathom the love that you have for me today, God. Lord, I'm so thankful that you love this world so much that you gave us your only begotten Son to die on an old rugged cross and shed his precious blood. And then he was buried. And then three days later, just as he said he would, he rose from the dead by the power of God. Father, that's why we're here today. That's why we're here, because of that resurrection power. Thank you, God, that all my sins have been forgiven forever, been taken away. And thank you, Lord, I've been justified by the resurrected Jesus Christ. I pray, God, you bless this message. Put your every word in my mouth today. Let me be a blessing to this flock today, Lord. And God, I pray if there's any among us who's never truly been saved, I pray that today would be the day and this would be the hour that call upon the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Help the Christian today who may be struggling. Now I pray and ask it all in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Paul said that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. How many folks remember the message last week? The power of the cross. Amen. Well, you know, that's Friday. That's a Friday message. Now we've got to have a Sunday message. Amen. Because Jesus rose on Sunday morning. Amen. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ, this is the single most significant event in human history. Did you hear what I said? This is the single most significant event in human history. Since the foundation of the world, nothing like this has ever happened except when Jesus rose from the dead. And Jesus did raise from the dead. Amen? All of Christianity rests upon this truthfulness. If it's not true, we have nothing to talk about, do we? But Jesus did rise from the dead. As believers, we know that it's a fact and we embrace it as the central issue of our faith. Man, if we're going to talk about anything to anybody anywhere, it ought to be about the resurrection of Jesus Christ because without the resurrection, there is no Christianity. Amen? He rose from the dead. This is our message. He rose from the dead. Last week I preached about the power of the cross and the significance of the power in our daily life. So we must ask our, our question today, what significance does the resurrection of Jesus have for us in daily living? Amen? Let me begin by saying this. Can you fathom in your minds and in your heart that the same power that raised Jesus Christ, the Son of God, up from the grave is the very same power existing in the heart of the believer this morning. If you would take a trip this morning uh, to, uh, to the Holy Land, we can begin our tour by going to Jerusalem. Then we could take a trip after going to Jerusalem. We could go into the, to the Garden of Gethsemane and see where the Savior prayed the night before His crucifixion. Then we could go to the place in the public there where He was beaten with a cat of nine tails. And then eventually we would make our way to the mount called Calvary and see the place where He was slain. After that, we could, we could take a tour down to a place that's called Gordon's Tomb. And this is a tomb that was discovered by a British man by the name of Gordon. 
Jordan in, in uh, 1883. It, it is said to be the actual tomb that Jesus was buried and that he rose from the dead in. You see, there's several different uh, places over there in Jerusalem that are called the, gar the, the tomb where Jesus was raised uh, from the dead. In fact, there's one where the Catholic Church claimed that that is the resurrection place and they built a Catholic Church there. But this tomb in particular uh, is situated close to Calvary and when you still today look at the hillside, you will see a place of the skull, which is defined in the Bible here of the place of Calvary where Jesus was crucified. So if we were to walk inside this tomb, there would be something very, very different about this tomb today. We would discover that it is empty. Did you see the smile on my face when I said that? Because that's a happy thought, ladies and gentlemen, knowing that the tomb is empty. Jesus rose from the dead. The reason it is empty is because he came to life and he walked out on the third day after his crucifixion. This fact is the center of all Christianity. This fact is the center of all Christianity. Amen. The fact that Jesus arose from the dead. Of course we know, that, as I preached last week, about the cross, the power of the cross. That's a hotly debated uh, uh, subject, as is the resurrection. You see, the skeptic won't believe it. The atheist denies it. He doesn't even believe in God. It doesn't matter, though, what the opinion or what, uh, of the skeptic or the atheist is, or for anyone that matter, it is happened. Amen. Jesus Christ arose from the dead. Oh, listen to me, dear friend. This is just not an Easter Sunday morning message. This is an every Sunday message. In fact, this is a Monday through Friday, a Monday through Saturday and Sunday message, amen, that we talk about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to keep this thought in your mind today during the message that the, the resurrection refers to something that did die but then is raised and begins to live a new life, amen? Something that did die. And now let me just put this in perspective for you this morning. Something died on the day that you became a born-again Christian. He was called the old man Amen. or the old lady. Let's go with old man. <laughs> Let's go with old man. But you have to believe, Christian, today that the old man died the day that you got saved and the new man was resurrected in your life. You came to life. The Bible says that we were quickened by the power of God. We were made alive. Why is that? Because we were dead. We were walking dead men and women spiritually, but the Spirit of God entered our hearts and quickened our soul and made us alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. When Lazarus was raised by Jesus, he had died a few days earlier. But then Jesus came and raised him up. But what happened there? Jesus just revived him back to the old life. Why do I say that? Because Lazarus got old and died again. Amen. Even Dr. Schofield, if you have a Schofield Bible, he is careful to use the phrase, the raising of Lazarus. He does not use the word resurrection. So when Jesus was raised from the dead, he forever lives. That's because he was given a new life. So when the lost sinner comes to be saved, Jesus Christ enters into the heart of that person, and that life that enters into him is life that is everlasting. Amen. It is the life of Jesus that lives forever. Immediately the old self has died to unbelief. And by the way, that's what you're forgiven of when you become a Christian. You're forgiven of unbelief. Amen. It's not, people go to the altar and pray and they cry out to God, I'm so sorry, uh, save me for those things I did Saturday night or Friday night or when I was mean to that person or when I cheated that person. Those things, listen, it's about belief or unbelief. God forgives us of our unbelief and that's what converts the soul. Amen. That's when we become a Christian. So, listen, when you cross over from dark to light, isn't that a good thing? God has changed your heart from unbelief uh, of the old man to the resurrected new man of belief. We need to remind ourselves also of this fact that God has changed us. Amen. You know the Jews today, they reject that Jesus is the Messiah even yet today because when Jesus came on the scene, he did not do what the Jews said or thought that he was supposed to do. He was supposed to defeat their enemies and set up his kingdom. But what they don't realize is who the real enemy is. It is death. It is death. And so Jesus defeated death by his resurrection. He is Lord of lords. He is King of kings. He is the eternal one. He is the resurrected Son of God. Amen. Amen. So what is the most powerful force 
in the universe. Well, we might think if we lived in Florida, it might be the power of the wind. And I'm not boasting, or I'm not joking about this, but some folks may say Hurricane Irma or Hurricane Harvey or Hurricane Andrew or Hurricane Katrina is an awesome, uh, awesome force. And yes, it is. But ladies and gentlemen, that is not the most powerful force in the universe today. Some may say, well, it's the waves. Have you ever seen a tsunami? Well, I'm sure that that would be very frightening. Have you seen a tornado in Indiana? That's frightening too. Amen. But now, listen, how about the power of the watt in electricity that makes these lights burn and this sound system work today. That's a pretty powerful thing too, but that is not the most powerful force in the universe. Well, what about the power of war? Nuclear weapons, that's a pretty awesome power, but yet it is not the most awesome power in the universe today. Let me tell you what it is. It's what Paul said it is. Paul said that it is, that it is the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ that is the most powerful force in the world today, ladies and gentlemen. And why is that? Because, listen, the resurrection has the power to change lives and to give people eternal life who seek the Lord. Amen. Amen. Nuclear weapons will not give us uh, eternal life. Uh, the wind cannot give us eternal life. Nothing can give us eternal life. The preacher cannot give you eternal life. Only the Spirit of God can give you eternal life, and that come about by the resurrected Jesus Christ. Amen. I want us to look and see this morning how that the resurrection has changed the lives of many people in the Word of God. And yet we can relate these people to us in our modern day today. In the Bible, in John chapter 20, we find the story of Thomas not being with the disciples on the resurrection day later in the afternoon when Jesus had appeared to all the disciples in that room where the windows were closed and the doors were closed. Anybody remember that story? The windows were closed, and the doors were closed, and the disciples were all there except for Thomas, and then Jesus appears in their midst. Oh, what a beautiful time that must have been. I bet their hearts were throbbing. I bet you they were nervous, but yet happy at the same time. Amen? And you know what? Thomas was not there. But when you read John chapter 20, you're going to find a verse that says, And after eight days... After eight days, Jesus reappeared to them, and this time Thomas was with them. I like that part where it says, after eight days. Because the number eight in the Bible represents new beginnings. It signifies resurrection. Jesus was sending a message to Thomas that day, saying, I am the resurrection, Thomas, and you have a new beginning. You know, uh, many people think that, uh, like Mary and Martha thought, when their brother Lazarus had died, they thought Jesus had shown up so late. I mean, this was day number four, and Lazarus was already in the tomb. He was dead. They said, as a matter of fact, Jesus, uh, his body is going to be stinking by now. A lot of people thought Jesus was late, but yet he said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came forth that day. Amen? You know, Jesus showed up right on time for Thomas because Thomas was what? The doubter. And he needed some encouragement. And so when Jesus shows up eight days later, he says, Thomas, I could just imagine this conversation. You know how many days have gone by now since I've been resurrected? This is day number eight. Thomas, you know what the number eight means? That's, that's the sign of new beginnings and resurrection. Thomas, you've got a new beginning. Because what happened on that day, Thomas bowed his heart and said, My Lord and my Master. Amen. Thomas, all of his doubt fleeted the way. You know, the, the, the resurrection has power to, to change people from doubt to devotion. Amen. So let me ask you, are you sitting here today and thinking, Boy, I need a new beginning. I need a new beginning. Sometimes life has been a little unkind to me. Well, you know what? The power of the resurrection is your source for daily living today. Even as a Christian, do you feel defeated like you're not getting anywhere sometimes? I felt that way a lot of times. I felt, man, why am I so stagnant today? Why are things, why are things the way that they are? Well, I tell you what, when we learn to trust in the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that will be power for our daily living. And ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you, I can assure you today, that speaks to my heart so much more than anything that has in such a long time. I won't forget two June Jubilees ago when Bob Christopher brought this up about the resurrected Jesus Christ living his life in and through us. Man, that just, that was a home run 
done to me. And, and so from that day forward, it's just been all about, it's not about me, it's not Tim, it's not what I can do, but it's what he is doing. Jesus is alive forevermore. He's alive when I'm sleeping. He's never sleeping. Uh, when, I'm, when I'm thinking about other things, when I'm working, he's thinking about me. He's just living his life in and through me. When I go places, do things, talk to people, whatever, Jesus is still present. He's living his life in and through me. It's not my steps that are being ordered, but Jesus is ordering my steps for me. Amen? And that's the power of the resurrection. That's the power of having uh, a living and the power of the resurrection. I don't, I honestly, thank God for this. I don't fret over many things anymore. When I find myself fretting and worrying, I just say, wait a minute. The resurrected Jesus Christ lives his life in and through me. I'm not separating myself from reality. Listen, I know bills got to be paid. I know things got to be dealt with. There are issues of life. But yet, it's the power of the resurrected Jesus Christ that can settle all, do all, and make all things work as it should. Amen. There's lots of troubles in the world, but if you're living this life without the resurrected life, you've got troubles, and you're going to continue to have troubles. But having the resurrected one living in your heart, things will become much easier when you let Jesus have control. So let me ask you, was Thomas a Christian even though he was doubting the resurrection? Why, yes, he was. Thomas was a Christian. Christians must believe in the resurrection of Jesus to be saved, but many Christians do not apply the power of the resurrection to their lives to live in the fullness of what God has in store for them. Amen? A scripture came to me this morning that reminded me that we are complete in Jesus Christ. You cannot be complete if you don't have the resurrected Jesus Christ living in your heart, and that is what makes you complete. Amen? Realize, ladies and gentlemen, there is an eighth day for you. A day of new beginnings and resurrection power. Now, when I said that people, sometimes, they do not live that resurrected life, here's what I mean by that. When Christians, when people become a Christian, they're oftentimes guided, and I want to make a footnote, misguided, about things that you need to do, you must do, you got to do, if you're going to be successful. Right there, you've set them up for nothing but destruction and failure because nobody can keep a rule. Amen. Yes. Don't you think about a pink elephant right now. No, don't you think about a, don't you think about a pink elephant. You just broke rules. Yes. Amen. So that's, that's the example. But now listen, uh, when, I, when, when I learn to not set a standard for myself, what is that standard? Well, I better be having my daily devotion at 9 a.m. Yeah. And if I, mess, if I miss that, oh my God, what's Jesus going to think of me now? That's the attitude that I lived with yeah. for a, a thousand years, it yeah. seems like. Yeah. Amen? If I miss a time of prayer of, oh, can I show you something this morning? Can I be real spiritual? I mean, I don't want to offend anybody with this, but just let me show you something, okay? <laughs> See that right there? Some people say, oh, that's the mark of a Christian. That boy's been down on his knees praying. <laughs> no, that's the mark of being on the floor over here scrubbing. <laughs> But I'm going to tell you something. I showed you that just so I can make this real. There are preachers I know of that have went to other church members and say, let me see your knees. They want to know if they've been praying or not. Like that's all real spiritual. It is spiritual to pray. But when you make it a demand or you make it a command or you make it a rule, it takes Jesus all the way out of it. I don't care if you say his name a thousand times. It takes Jesus out of it. When you go to him in your relationship and you say, Father, oh God, I love you and I'm so thankful that I have this opportunity to talk to you one more time. That makes the difference. And you know what God's doing at that time? Yeah. Amen. Say on, son. Say on. Amen. That's the power of the resurrected life of Jesus Christ living in and through you, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't know I was getting off on that, but I did pray a prayer. I said, Holy Spirit, put words in my mouth that I didn't count on saying today. So there you go. You got it. So get away from the rules and regulations and the, and the demands of life uh, because if you don't, you're not living the resurrected life that he intended for you to live. And let me tell you something. There's so much freedom in that. Yeah. Yeah. There is so much rest yeah. 
and letting him live the Christian life instead of you trying to live the Christian life. Amen? Because you're going to fail living that Christian life. Thomas was a doubter, but the resurrected Jesus Christ changed all of that for him. Thomas was a pessimist. You got any pessimists in here? Please don't raise your hand. You know what Thomas said in John chapter 11 when they're standing there? Uh, when, they're, when, when Jesus says, we're going to go, we're going to uh, raise Lazarus up. Uh, they're going to go through a country there uh, where the Jews hated Jesus and they were, they were afraid that he was going to be stoned. And so Thomas just said, well, let's just all go with Jesus and we'll just die with him. See, that's the words of a pessimist, right? But Thomas became a mighty witness after it was over, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, Thomas is credited for taking the gospel to India. And there is a hill to this day at an airport, if I can pronounce this name correctly, Chennai Majoris in India, where there is a tomb there that said that Thomas... The apostle was buried in. And there are churches in South India today that trace their beginnings all the way back to the ministry of Thomas. He's said to have been martyred there and run through by a spear. But you see, Thomas began it as a doubter, but the power of the resurrection turned him into a mighty witness for God. Amen? I want to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's just... Uh, <laughs> Let's just make this real. I heard this statement not long ago, and I'm going to have to just throw it in right here. When it comes back to the daily Bible reading schedule and the daily prayer schedule and the daily I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, what, what New Testament do you think the apostles was reading for their daily uh, Bible study time? They did not have the New Testament. Amen. They were living in the New Testament. <laughs> they were the guys that was getting written about and going to be writing it. Amen. So do you see what I'm talking about? Get away from the rules. Get away from the regulations. Just let Jesus live his life through you. You're going to be healthier spiritually. You're going to be healthier physically. You're going to be better mentally. Amen? Because you're taking the pressure off of you and letting Jesus do it all. That just makes me smile. It just makes me smile. I don't have to preach another word. That just makes me smile. It makes my heart happy. Amen? So are you a doubter like Thomas? Well, the resurrection can change that. Why do we believe in the resurrection today? Well, I'll tell you why. Because, number one, there's an empty tomb. Amen? The disciples could not have stolen the body. Well, why is that? Because there were so many guards there. There were at least 16 guards guarding the tomb. So the disciples could not have come in and stolen the body. The Jews, they would not have misplaced it. Do you think they're going to misplace this body? Uh, this guy who, uh, who was a heretic, they said? They're going to make sure that body's secure, mister. <laughs> so he was not stolen. They, nobody stole the body. So... Uh, and Jesus wasn't like our news today, you know, fake news. Jesus could not have faked his resurrection, amen, or his death. And how about the eyewitness testimony? All of the apostles had seen him many times after the resurrection, amen. How about the extraordinary transfer transformations of all of the apostles? Think about all of the apostles. Think about all of the disciples, the lives that they had before they be began to follow Jesus. Tax collectors, fishermen, uh, cheaters, and stealers, and, and just you name it. That's what they were. Murderers. But yet the resurrection power of Jesus Christ changed all of those lives and transformed them miraculously. The greatest evidence that Jesus is the Son of God and the Savior of the world is the resurrection. Amen? If you are skeptical of Jesus, the resurrection has power to change that. The resurrection changed some people from fear to faith. Again, let's go back to the story of Thomas being in that upper, uh, not being in that upper room. But the other disciples were there. They were shut up in that room. You know why? Because they were afraid that the Romans were going to come and get them next and crucify them. So they were shut up in that room and they were all there. They were all in fear. We know that Peter denied Jesus and all of the disciples were afraid. They all fled from him on the night of his arrest there in the garden. Oh, but then something wonderful happens, ladies and gentlemen. They all see Jesus in that upper room and Jesus breathes the Holy Ghost upon them at one point. And then all of the disciples, they speak up in their faith. Do you remember what happened on the day of Pentecost? They preached Jesus to all of the city there in the temple. They preached Jesus in spite of persecution. They preached Jesus boldly to the world. And you know why that is? You know what made the difference? It's because Jesus rose from the dead. It was the resurrection power that gave them the courage, that gave them the boldness, that changed their minds, that changed their hearts, that gave them an eighth day, a new beginning. Amen? Some say that the disciples just made up the story. But you know what? Honestly, honestly, 
the disciples were just as surprised about Jesus appearing in that room as anybody else was. They wasn't expecting it. They heard Jesus say, I'm going to rise on the third day. But he didn't say anything that you guys are going to be in the upper room one day and I'm going to just come in and be there in the midst of you when the doors are closed and the, and the windows are down. He didn't tell them that, but he showed up. They were surprised. They were shocked. Amen? Are you afraid of something? Is it disease or is it darkness? Maybe death? There's no need to fear, really. There is no need for the Christian to fear anything. And here's why. Matthew 28, Jesus said this, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, our Savior never leaves us. He cannot leave us because He cannot leave Himself. That should be comforting words for your heart today. The believer is inwardly fashioned for faith and not fear. Fear is not our friend, but faith is. Worry and anxiety are like taking sand and throwing it into a, a, an engine of a car, getting into all the gears and the pistons and into the oil, messing things up. But faith is like adding fresh oil to a car engine. Amen. You know what? I have found that I live better by faith and confidence than I do instead of fear, doubt, and then anxiety. Amen. Fear, anxiety, they keep you gasping for air, don't they? Yeah. But then that's not resurrection living either. But what is resurrection living is having faith and confidence and you breathe freely in Jesus' name. John Hopkins University, they did a study and they said, we don't know why that it is that worriers die sooner than non-worriers, but it is a fact. So don't be worried if you don't want to die. <laughs> so to live by worry is to live against reality. So if you're living in fear, the power of the resurrection can change that. If you're living in fear today, if you're living in anxiety, and listen, I speak of this because I know there's so much of it that's going around in our society today. People get anxious. People get worried. People's hearts are troubled. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, I said I'm not trying to separate us from reality. We live in this world. But rely on who lives inside you today. Right. It is the power of the resurrected Jesus Christ. It is not of ourselves. We can't, it's been proven. We cannot do it of ourselves. Amen? You know what? Mary Magdalene, she was really close to Jesus. She was close to the disciples. She followed their ministry, supported their ministry the best that she could. She was at the cross the day that Jesus died. She was at the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. Do you think she was upset at Jesus' death? Yes, she was. But listen, on the day of the resurrection, things changed for her. The angels asked her, they said, Woman, why do you weep? Why do you weep? That's a pretty good question. Well, she says, well, they've taken my Lord. You know, we cry for loved ones too, don't we? We, we, we lose their fellowship sometimes. We, we lose their love. That we want, to, we want to receive their love. We want to give our love to them. There are lost dreams sometimes that happen. But you know, the resurrection can change all of that. Because of the resurrection, we can have a reunion. You know, just recently, I found some photographs of my, my grandma roller and my grandfather, my grandpa Roller, I never knew him. He died in 1930. And there is a picture of him that I have. You saw it yesterday. It's on my piano. And when I'm sitting there at the piano, pretending to play like Jerry Lee Lewis, Great Balls of Fire. <laughs> so you are awake, aren't you? Okay. And I don't play the piano. I can't play a lick on the piano. Not even chopsticks. I tried playing chopsticks and they beat me up. <laughs> But I have those pictures sitting there, and I'll walk by those pictures even as early as this morning. I walked by those two photographs, and I looked at them, and I thought, someday, someday, because of the power of the resurrection, I'm going to meet you for the very first time, and I'm going to renew my acquaintance with you again. Amen. Amen. That is the power of the resurrection. That is our hope, ladies and gentlemen. If you have photographs of your passed on loved ones sitting around the house, walk by them in total peace and comfort and know that there is a glad reunion day coming. You're going to reunite with that loved one again. Amen. And you know why that is? That is the, because of the power of the resurrection because of the power of the resurrection. And because of the power of the resurrection, love will never die. 
That's why Jesus cannot stop loving us because He rose from the dead. Amen. And may I remind you what I said earlier? That same power that raised Jesus up from the dead is the very same power that lives in your heart today as a believer. As a believer. Amen. You know why you love God? You know why you love God? It's because it's the power of the resurrection. Amen. Because of the power of the resurrection, our dreams are not here, but they're hereafter. Amen? So, whatever has caused you to be in despair, the resurrection has power to bring you delight once again. You remember the days that you was happy? <laughs> you can be happy again. Amen? Well, I'm, I'm happy now. There's not many days I've been sad, but on the days I am sad, I can go look in the mirror and I can say, the power of the resurrection has made me happy. Amen? The power of the resurrection changed some people from confusion to confidence also. Do you remember the story on the day of the resurrection when Jesus met those two fellows that was walking on the road to Emmaus? And they were having this conversation about all the events that have been going on in Jerusalem. And Jesus enters the picture. And uh, he's asking them, what are you guys talking about? Well, haven't you heard about this Jesus that was crucified? And then uh, he was buried. And then on the third day, which is today, he rose from the dead. That's what we're talking about. And then Jesus began to explain found to them all that was said about him from Moses through all of the prophets and everything that had come up to that day. Then they went to a little place to sit down and have something to eat and when, they, when he blessed the food they knew that it was him and it brought joy to their heart. Oh, they were so confused, but now they have confidence. And you know what those fellows did? Man, I could see them practically running back to Jerusalem to tell the story how that they had walked on the road to Emmaus with the Savior that day. So all of the confusion was gone. When people are confused about things, what we need to remember is that the power of the resurrection has the power has the power to clear those things up. You know what? Jesus had power to heal the sick. He had power to raise the dead. We find those stories in the Word of God. He had power to withstand the enemies. And the disciples, they were confused about Jesus' prophecy because He clearly told them that He was going to have to die, but again, that He would rise on the third day. But they didn't get it at that point. They just didn't understand. You've got all this power, but yet you're going to die? We just don't understand that. But then the resurrection cleared everything up. They now understood what he had prophesied. They now understood who he was. They now understood his power was not gone. And let me just tell you one thing, ladies and gentlemen, about the power of the resurrection working in your life. This is something that the devil does not want you to be thinking about. He does not want you to be thinking about the power of the resurrection. And just let me make this real to you today, how it's been real to me this week. Do you want to know when this thought came to my heart about what I was going to be preaching about today, the message that you're hearing right now? It came to me when I walked out that door last Sunday about the power of the cross and the Holy Spirit said next week it's the power of the resurrection. Because if you're going to have a Friday, you've got to have the Sunday. Amen? But I want to tell you, you would have thought this preacher would have had five, six days to get boom, 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 everything just all lined up and, and, and hear the greatest message on the resurrection you could have ever heard. You want to hear about all the interruptions that happened this week? You want to hear about all the other things that Tim Roller got busy with this week? There was a lot of things I got busy with this week. But I always knew back here and in here it was going to be the power of the resurrection. The power of the resurrection. The power of the resurrection. But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, somebody else come along and enter the picture making me busy with this, making that phone call come, making this little thing come up where this hospital visit had to be made, where this, and this guy made me practice that song 50 times this week. Amen. <laughs> you devil, you. <laughs> I love you, Dano. <laughs> but I want to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. The devil does not want the Christian believer to be thinking and remembering of the power of the resurrection. Amen? Because when you know about the power of the resurrection in your heart and in your life, it gives you power for daily living, and the devil wants you to live in defeat. Harry Truman, he enjoyed telling the story about a man that got hit in the head one day. It knocked him out so hard that he was unconscious for an extended period of time, many days actually. And later his family finally said, well, he's dead, so let's call the funeral home. So the undertaker came and picked up the body. They took him and put him in a coffin. And then suddenly this fellow woke up and sat straight up in that coffin. And he was confused. He blinked several times and he looked around. And he's trying to put all this together, what happened. And then he thought, well, if I'm alive... What am I doing in this coffin? But if I'm dead, why do I have to go to the bathroom? <laughs> now there's a fellow who is confused. Amen? 
Now, let me reassure you this. There are things that you never have to be confused about because of the resurrection. You do not have to be confused about who Jesus is. He is the living Son of God. You do not have to be confused about how to get to heaven because He is the way, the truth, and the life. You do not have to be confused about what your purpose in life is. It is the Great Commission. You do not have to be confused about daily living because the resurrected Jesus Christ is the one living His life in and through you. Amen? You know that there was uh, uh, the resurrection... It changed some people from power to panic. Hmm, what do I mean by this? What do you remember when Jesus was in the tomb? They set some Roman soldiers there at the tomb. Now these, these were men's men. These were strong men. These were men that worked for the state. They were going to be there to guard that tomb to make sure that the tomb was secured, the body would not be stolen, and they would, then they would give an account as to what they had saw. But now... What happened was, well, we know the story, how that when the resurrection took place, all of these men, they fainted with what? Fear. They fainted with fear. So they went from power to panic. They went from power to panic. These were brave Roman soldiers. But because Jesus is alive, they fell to the earth. You know what? If you're a Christian... We're going to stand before Jesus one of these days. We're going to stand before that resurrected one. And let me tell you something. It's going to be a good day. Some people have said it's going to be a fearful day. I, I, I've heard Christians preach messages of how awful it's going to be to stand before Jesus and give an account for our life as believers. That is very confused preaching. Because listen, it's going to be a happy time when we stand before the Savior and He says, you're mine you're mine, you're mine, and I love you. And you know what? We will be rewarded because of our belief in Him. But there are those, the unbelievers, it's going to be a horrible time. It'll be a horrible time to stand before the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Jesus will rebuke those folks for their unbelief. You see the difference there? I don't care how brave we are or how brave some people say they are. The unbeliever, they will cringe before God. The resurrection has the ability to change power to panic. And the devil knows this quite well. Why do you think things are happening the way that they are? Satan is working overtime these days in people's lives because he's panicking. The panic button has been hit. He knows his time is short. Let me tell you something. I'm not a date setter. Not at all. Unless I'm talking to a pretty girl. <laughs> but I would tell you, I don't know the date or the hour that Jesus Christ is coming, but ladies and gentlemen, our Savior is coming very, very soon. Yeah. Amen. And the devil has hit the panic button. The, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the power that we need, and it is the power that we have in our daily lives. The resurrection changed some from death to life. You know what? The people that call upon Jesus are changed from death to life. You know, the people who die in Christ Jesus are changed from death to life. When Jesus arose, it's because of His resurrection, they're resurrected too. And Jesus is still bringing the dead back to life. Those who die physically in Christ, He will give them life. Our resurrection is guaranteed by His resurrection. Amen? Those who are dead in their sins, only Christ can give you life. Only Christ can give you life. And for us who are believers, the Bible says we have been quickened from our trespasses and sins. Did you ever think about this? That an, ind an individual cannot give you something that he does not have. People cannot give you what they don't have. So if some other person comes along and says, I can give you life, don't you trust it? Don't you believe it? They don't have life to give. This preacher cannot give you life. Joining this church will not give you life. Getting baptized 50 times will not give you life. Being the nicest person in the world, keeping 10 commandments, giving tithes, giving offerings, giving special offerings, cannot give you life. Only Jesus can give life. Amen. Only Jesus. So, the power of the resurrection is the power to change us. It is the greatest power in the universe. It is the power to release us from bondage of fear. It is the power to relieve us from our burdens and cares. It is the power to revive us from our coldness to hardness. It is the power 
to redeem us from our sins and ourselves. Amen? Do you need a change today? Do you need the power of the resurrection? The way to have this power is to trust fully in Jesus. You know, when the tomb received the body of Jesus, guess what? The tomb received resurrection power. When we were dead and we received Jesus Christ, we received resurrection power. Now we have that power working in our lives. Amen. And let me just say this in conclusion. Let's get a song. Musicians, if you want to come. Sometimes we may just need to hear these words spoken to us again by the sweet Holy Spirit. Words like, I am the resurrection. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the rock of ages. I'm the bread of life. I'm the bridge over your troubled waters. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the doctor that can heal your body. I'm the lawyer that's never lost a case. And I am that I am. Let's bow our hearts. Father, we thank you today for your Son who was gloriously raised from the dead by the power of God. Father, today I pray that every believer in this room today, I pray that their hearts, Lord, would be filled and overflowing with the joy of the Lord, knowing that you live your resurrected life in and through them today. I pray you would make it so plain. Father, we realize that we still live in this world where there's trials, there's problems, there's issues of everyday life that we have to deal with. We still have to work jobs. We still have to go to the grocery store. We still have to pay our light bills and everything else. We still have to make purchases. Lord, we're, we're dealing with relationships that sometimes don't work out. God, we're living in this world. But Father, what a joy it is to know that we can rely upon the resurrected Son of God living His life in and through us today as believers that makes those decisions easier to come by, makes life easier and more pleasant. And Father, You said that You came to give us life and life more abundantly. And Father, we enjoy that abundant life today. Now, Father, if there is one in our midst today that does not relate to anything I've talked about concerning resurrection or having the resurrected Son of God living in their heart, I pray, Father, that this moment right now, they'll bow their heart and say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Come into my life and save me this moment. I pray, God, if there's one here, let them do that in this hour. And Father, I'll thank you for that and praise you now. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Would you stand to your feet, please, as we sing.